In today's video, we're going to be showing you how to install a rudder pedal kit from the Tony Kart to this EVS for those smaller drivers so they can reach the pedals and not foul their legs, you know, their calf muscles on the tie rods when they're doing the steering. Hey guys, welcome back to the Power Public YouTube channel. Today's video, we're going to be showing you how to fix the cart for the small driver. This is a Tony Kart EVS. They're awesome, and they're even awesome for the Cadet 9s racing here in Australia on the sticky tyres. So what we're going to show you today is how to fit a Tony Kart pedal platform to the front of this cart so we can bring the pedals back closer to the driver and also lift their heels up off the floor tray so that their legs don't foul on the tie rods. Because those little drivers, their feet only just go over the tie rods, so when they turn left and right, the tie rods start to hit them in the, in the ankles and move their pedals anyway. So we lift their heels up off the floor tray and bring those pedals back a little bit closer to the steering wheel. If we have a look at the Tony Kart pedal platform kit, you get awesome componentry. These are CNC machined alloy, got all the hardware, everything that you need to adjust the pedals to make those little drivers fit in the, the bigger 950 millimeter frame. It even comes with a bent brake rod, so you can get that in there as well. So the beauty of fitting this kit to the cart is that it has heaps of adjustability, heaps of different positions for those pedals so you can really optimize the seating position for the driver so they can reach the brakes and the accelerator and drive the cart perfectly. Before we go any further in the video, I'm just gonna remove some of the paneling so you can see me work on the close up how we're gonna remove the old pedals and the crash bars from the cart and then reinstall all the new stuff. To remove the NASA panel, you're gonna use a four millimeter Allen key and a 10 millimeter ring spanner. Once you remove the NASA panel, lay it off to one side. To remove the nose cone, just undo the two nose cone clips and put the nose cone off to one side. So now we've removed some of the paneling, it's time to get into the job. So the next thing we're gonna do is remove the two front crash bars, top and bottom. That's gonna give us access to the pedals so we can reinstall the new pedal kits. Using a soft hammer, you can just tap off that bottom crash bar. The next step is to remove the pedal bolts. So we're just gonna remove this little um, circlip, little safety circlip off the end. And then with two 13 mil spanners, we can undo this guy. We'll use the ratchet. And then the whole pedal assembly can just slide out of the go-kart. Just like that. I like to leave the spring on the pedal so it all goes back together a little bit easier at the end. And it's the same for the other side. If the spring's a little bit stuck, you can just get yourself a flat blade screwdriver and just slowly wedge it out of the out of the frame. And with a soft face hammer, you can tap the pedal bolt back out of the chassis if it's a little bit stuck. Now we can remove these little guys from the frame. We're not going to use them on the new kit. So the kit comes with two pedal extensions and this is the one for the accelerator. It's got a groove in it or a slot here whereas the brake side doesn't, so they are slightly different. Okay, so these things are as simple as just sliding them straight into position and then securing them in place with the provided hardware. And if you get lost at any stage, there is some pretty detailed instructions and it's dead simple to follow those.
And it's the same for the other side. Make sure you do the bolt up nice and tight so that the head of the button head screw pulls down inside the aluminium housing here. So before we go any further, we're going to remove the original heel rest from the go-kart. Now the reason we do that is the new heel rest and pedal platform has to go in so then we know where to put the pedals in relation to where the kids' feet are going to be sitting on the go-kart. So grab yourself a 5mm Allen key, undo these two M6 cap screws, and we can remove the original pedal heel rest from the cart. We can remove the heel stop from the mounting bracket, because we're going to reuse this mounting bracket with some spacer blocks underneath in between here and the chassis. And that's going to raise our pedal platform up and we're going to be able to bring it all the way back nice and close to the steering wheel so the driver can reach the pedals. This driver is pretty small so we're going to use the full stack of spacers underneath the mounting bracket and screw that back down to the floor tray. And underneath here the nuts are captive in this little bracket so it makes getting the car back together nice and easy. The first thing I like to do is position that little bracket underneath the chassis up onto the chassis and hold it with my finger in position and then slowly but surely we can line up all our brackets sorry all our spaces mounting bracket goes on top and then there's a couple of longer screws that we can use go all the way down through the whole assembly and then lock it all together with the 5mm Allen key. So now we can install the, the two heel rests onto the cart. So we're going for maximum adjustment here all the way back with the heel rest closest to the driver and then there's more adjustment where you can move the pedals um, sorry the heel rest further out and also too we can start moving this mounting bracket further forwards as the driver grows so now we're ready to reinstall the pedal onto the extension bracket first of all we're going to put the spring in this little hole over here jiggle the bolt through and push the pedal in the spring assembly all in together as one unit. And you can jiggle the pedal around a little bit because you want to get the spring to get out of the way so that when you do this bolt up, you're in nice and tight. It will take a little bit of practice and a couple of attempts. So to get this part all together, I'm just doing it in in stages where if I push the bolt all the way through because I've got the pedal so far back I can't actually get the nut on so I've had to just get it started and then slowly work the bolt back through the extension bracket while keeping the little stopper screw up on top obviously the springs trying to pull the pedal back as it gets wound on here so it's just a bit of a little process and you can do that bolt up pretty firm because the wash has stopped the pedal from locking it all together boom be good to go. So now that we've got the pedal and the spring and the bolt, it's all tight and it's all in and it's perfect, the last thing we've got to do is just adjust the stopper screw so that we've got a two inch gap or 50 millimeters from the back side of the pedal to the back side of this heel stop. It is a bit of a guess and check just to get the pedal in the right position. But like I said a bit earlier, I like to have about a 50 millimeter gap from this uh, back side of the pedal down to where the driver's heel is going to 
be resting in the in the pedal platform. So it's the same for the other side, barring the little steel bracket that comes with the kit that goes down in here. Now, the kit does come shipped with all its own hardware, but I like to reuse some of the hardware off the original pedals, like this little spacer bracket, uh, spacer bush, <laughs> and also too, it's always good to have your own sort of hardware, because I've changed from the standard M8 bolt the standard M8 nut to this shorter version so it doesn't foul on the chassis. So now that we've got the pedal platform and the pedal extensions in their correct position, it's time to reinstall the throttle cable, cable clamp and the brake rod. Choose the brake rod that best suits the new pedal position. Roughly reattach the old clevis brackets off the original brake rod. Now with the brake rod and all the pedal hardware tight, reinstall the safety pins. Now on the throttle side, there is a throttle stopper that you're going to have to install. So it's a piece of hex with a tapped hole. You can just, and a locking nut and a bolt. You slide that into there. So you make sure you still get full throttle and hold it on with a washer and an M8 nylock nut. Do those up using a 13mm ring spanner and then you can just double check that you're getting full throttle but you're not overstretching your throttle cable. The next step is to reinstall the front crash bars and the plastics and we're ready to hit the track. So if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. If you've got any questions about this or any other karting related processes, please leave them in the comments section below. Like, share and subscri subscribe to our channel and share this video. If you haven't had enough of Power Republic, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Power Republic. You can go to our amazing website, www.powerpublic.com.au, grab yourself a t-shirt or something else that's also awesome and rad. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.